back to my channel. Uh, I know I've been making quite a few videos lately, but I've just been on a movie tear. Uh, I've been watching movies left, right, and center. Uh, I've been catching up on a lot of movies I've been wanting me, me to watch. Um, and yesterday, I got two movies that I've been meaning to get for a really long time. I uh, just never got around to it, but I did pick them up yesterday. Uh, as well, I think I'm going to make a video uh, soon about my just going, going through my whole collection just kind of doing a quick scan and showing you what I do have and whatnot and then later on maybe I'll break it down into uh, Criterions my imports uh, Other special releases and whatnot my did my uh, steel books and whatnot, uh, but in the meantime, let's just jump in right now the two uh, the the movies I got um, so the first one uh, I quite liked uh, mud um, now this movie is directed by Jeff Nichols who also did um, Take Shelter with Michael Shannon, which is a fantastic movie. I love the movie so much. Uh, I really think it's underrated as well. Uh, it hasn't been seen enough, I think. Uh, but I'll do a review of that one another time. Uh, but anyways, this one stars Matthew McConaughey, who is actually fantastic in this movie. Um, really great job. And I've been really impressed with Matt McConaughey recently because he's been doing just some really great roles, uh, starting with Magic Mike, Mud, Bernie. Um, and I know he's doing the Dallas Buyers Club, which apparently he's really good in as well. Uh, oh, and Killer Joe, he does a really great, creepy performance in that one as well. Um, and it's also got Reese Witherspoon, and it says here in the back that Reese Witherspoon is excellent, but she's so infrequent in the movie that really you don't really get to see her acting skills. It's just, I don't know why it's on there. Um, but anyways, it's a really great movie. Um, really suggest you guys check it out, because um, it's about uh, these two kids who are, they find a boat on a little island. This boat is stuck in a tree, apparently from a flood, and they're like, sweet, we're going to take this boat, we're going to get into a fort. Uh, but it turns out Matthew McConaughey is already living there. And so, you know, slowly they make a relationship with Matthew McConaughey. And Matthew McConaughey decides that um, he wants to get the boat working because um, he's a convict living in on the island. And so he kind of starts sending them, sending them on errands to get parts for the boat and whatnot. And, you know, they try and get it working. And then... There's all this other side stuff going on as well with the, the kid and his parents getting divorced and all this kind of stuff. But it's, it is a, just a pretty decent movie. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, really good storytelling. Um, it's a pretty, like, it's kind of like Huckleberry Finish uh, in that way because um, it is in Arkansas. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I just think that it wasn't overly sappy. You know, it, it wasn't, it's a coming of age movie, but it's not like, you know, it doesn't, push it so much on you. It uh, doesn't make you like, oh, see, 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 like, they're coming of age, get it. It's just, it's a, it's a really good, solid movie. I, I suggest you check it out. I did quite like it. Uh, the next one, which I've been meaning to see for a really long time, uh, Solomon Kane. Um, now, before I get into it, let's do just a little history on this movie. Um, this movie came out in 2009 in England, uh, directed by British director Michael J. Bassett, starring James Pierfoy, who's obviously also British or Scottish or whatever, they're all the same, right? Uh, and um, so it came in 2009. Now it only came, it just came out a few months ago uh, in North America on Blu-ray, no theatrical release, um, which is really strange because it's a pretty decent movie. And the budget on this thing was, guess, 40 million dollars. That's not a small budget. That's a big budget. Uh, what I suspect is that they meant for this to be a bigger picture and be released in North America and make a ton of money, but it just never got around to it. Uh, I think I know there were legal issues involved, um, so that's probably what held back the release, and you know they probably couldn't find a window for it and whatnot. Uh, so it just never got released here. But again, super strange because the budget is so high, and it, and what it made in box office was 19 million. So from a 40 million dollar budget, they only made 19 million. So nobody made their money back, uh, and which again is surprising because it is a pretty good movie. Um, so Star Genius Pure for Solomon Kane, who does a really good job. Um, as Solomon Kane, the kind of a rough character and whatnot. Uh, I liked his performance. The CGI was pretty good, which I was, I was kind of worried about because I was thinking, uh, 2009, I didn't recognize any, any of the uh, companies involved in making this movie. Um, but everything turned out solid. Um, you know, the story, pretty standard. You're not going to be surprised. But, you know, as an action movie, it's it's good. Uh, you know, uh, James Pierfoy and Solomon Kane, who... Uh, is in the army and in the British army and he's a soldier and he's notorious for killing a lot of people and if then basically the first scene so I'm not really spoiling anything uh, he's told that his soul is damned to hell and he's like no way bro like I'm not going to hell and decides to 
uh, jump out a window and join a monastery. And when he's in the monastery, he has all these crazy like scars on his body, like crosses and obviously biblical scriptures and whatnot. And then he's kicked out of there because he, uh, he's bringing darkness to the monastery. And he, he takes on a life of peace, decides he can't kill anymore. But there's this bro, other bro named Malachi, who's basically taking over the England and, and releasing demons and spirits. And basically, Solomon Cain's kind of forced out of retirement. And that's kind of the whole story. And, that, and I'm not going to spoil anything else. But again, it's a pretty standard story. But the action's great. Um, the, one of the characters has a really creepy mask, like a mask on his face, which I think, personally, is one of the creepiest masks I've seen in a long time. Uh, I rank it up there with probably the, the Halloween, the Mike Myers mask. Um, it is really creepy. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty satisfied, you know, maybe a three out of five or something like that because, you know, the story's kind of meh, but the action's really good in this movie. Um, and just a good medieval kind of story. It does have Max von Sydow as well, which is kind of weird to see in this movie. But uh, if you can check it out, if you can get it cheap, you know, I suggest you do get it. Uh, I also was in love with this slip cover, which I really quite enjoyed. Um, so check it out if you want to. Uh, the next one, a bit more, uh, maybe artsy fartsy. Uh, we're looking at *The Place Beyond the Pines*, um, directed by Derek. I can't say his name, Cifriance or whatever the hell it is. Um, but it's one that I was really looking forward to for a really long time, ever since I saw the trailer, like probably a year ago or whatnot. Um, and so it stars Ryan Gosling and Bradley Cooper, um, Eva Mendes. Now Ryan Gosling isn't. So, like he's not really in the movie for that long. He's maybe in for the movie this for about fifty minutes to an hour, and this movie is two hours and twenty minutes. So you're not getting a lot of Gosling in this, uh, who I kind of came to the movie for. I do like Bradley Cooper as well, um, but it is a it's a long movie and it's hard to kind of explain uh, because it's the way I would describe it and the way a lot of the reviewers and whatnot describe it is is, is a story about fathers and sons and how the sins of the father affect the, the son and how Brian Gosling um, basically is a stunt driver of, on his motorcycle and then decides to start robbing banks um, and Bradley Cooper's the cop that takes him down and then it just and then it skips 15 years in the future and their kids and, and so it, it, it's like a three act structure uh, broken down to you know the the parents and the kids and, and then what happens to the kids and then and then basically an end, end, end act um, but it was pretty good um, I know it got a lot of decent reviews. Um, I think it's at like 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. But I know a lot of people also didn't like it because they thought it was boring, long, and um, you know not enough explanation about why this and why that. But I did like it. You know, I I, I mean for see, to see it so long, so I kind of had it built up in my head. But you know, it didn't really pass that expectation, but it did meet it, and I did quite enjoy it. So I think you guys should check it out uh, if you need me to check it out for a while. Um, the next one that I got um, quite a while ago, just got around to watching it recently. Um, it, it was called it's called Excision, um, stars Annalyn McCord. Um, now this one, I don't know, it was alright. Um, you know, I, I heard a lot of good things about this movie. I think it's like, I think in the '90s or something on Rotten Tomatoes, maybe in eight in the '80s. But that, that's not a lot of reviews though. It's not like you know 100 reviews. It's like 20 or 40 reviews. But I heard a lot of good things about it. Um, I heard that was weird, and I saw the trailer, and the trailer looked really weird. Um, but I thought, I thought it was just alright. Um, Alan McCord actually does a really good performance. Um, that so She actually, you know, I, I hadn't really heard of her. I know she's in like 90210, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> um, but she did a really good performance. Um, and so, it's basically about this girl who um, is kind of weird and an outsider, and, but she's really creepily weird into like surgery and she wants to become a surgeon and um so she starts having these dreams about these crazy dream sequences which i think the dream sequences were i think were the, the best part of this movie actually um and this thing is just this this movie has a blood fetish i'm telling you there's so much blood in this movie i think most of the budget was spent on fake blood and dry cleaning because they just use so much of it in this movie um but anyways, back to the story. That Ellen McCord, she has a sister, cystic fibrosis, and she's an, and so like she kind of wants to help her sister, um, but and starts looking starts looking to like lung transplants and and whatnot because she also wants to be a surgeon, so it kind of goes hand in hand. So she wants to replace her sister's lungs, 
and there really isn't much like conflict in the beginning. It just kind of drags on and on until about the last 20 minutes or so when she starts going full on crazy and whatnot. Um, but you know, I don't know. A lot of people say it's a masterpiece. A lot of people seem to like it. I don't watch a lot of horror movies, so to me, this was just kind of like all right. Um, the ending kind of made it more worth it, um, but it wasn't an unexpected ending. It didn't blow my hair back or anything like that. It was just all right. But, you know, if it's something you need to check out, the Blu-ray quality is really good. Um, and it's good enough to warrant at least a watch, you know, if you're into this kind of genre. So check it out if you want to. Um, and so these last two are foreign films. Um, and this one I got a long time ago. And I just, again, I'm, I'm so bad at this. I ordered so many movies. I just never get around to watching a lot of them. So this one is called In a Glass Cage. Um, now this one is a, is a strange one. Um, and John Waters, the filmmaker, uh, he, even he says, like, they don't make art shockers like this anymore. More intense than, uh, Pasolini's Salo, if you know that movie, The 120 Days of Sodom, um, which is a, also a really weird movie. But, uh, what would I say this movie? Like, this movie, the atmosphere in this movie is really good. Um... The, the sets and the, the actors, like the, the main guy, is really creepy and crazy. Um, but just wait, I'm going to read the back to you, because this movie is not so. You don't see a lot of movies like this anymore. So basically, it's an ex-Nazi doctor whose wartime post in a concentration camp enabled him to commit the most appalling sex crimes against boys. Right there, what the fuck. Um, but after the war, living in Cognito in Spain, which is like a German guy in Spain, alright, makes sense. Uh, he again gives into his depraved desires until his shame and despair drive him to com commit suicide. But it fails, and he ends up in a giant iron lung. And um, now this guy, Angelo, comes in, and he's a nurse, apparently. Not really. Um, and he offers him these services to become an, a nurse for him. But he finds his Klaus's diaries which he kept during the Nazi era and, and took all these notes about what he was doing to these kids and whatnot. Um, so, basically, there's a weird psychosexual thing going on there, and it's just a bag full of craziness, this movie. But it's really good. Um, I'm surprised I held off so long watching it. Um, cause it, it but it is a, you know, it's not a big movie. I'm sure a lot of people haven't heard of it. I didn't know about it until, I think I just stumbled upon it on, on, a, on a list of, like, top... 10 weird movies or something like that, and I was like, oh shit, I want to check it out, looks on blu-ray.com, turns out it's on blu-ray, bought it, and it took me probably a year or so to get around to watching it, but, you know, I finally did, and I suggest, you know, if you, if you guys are into weird psych psychological horror, or like, just strange, obscure, weird cinema, check it out, it's definitely worth a watch, um, it's weird, but also good, um, so check it out, um, and the last one is a Criterion, that I recently got, um, Marquetta Lazarova, uh, by, ooh, how do I say his name, <laughs> um, Frantishek Vlatil, Vlatil, I don't know, so sue me, I can't say his name, um, but this movie came in 1967, it is in black and white, um, and it was voted the greatest Czechoslovakian movie ever made by Czech film critics and Czech, uh, publishers and whatnot, journalists, um, but this movie, man, it is really good, like, the cinematography is amazing, it's black and white, um, the cinematographer, whoever did it, I don't know his name, but just really fantastic shots, or widescreen shots, great, just great camera movement and whatnot, uh, the music was really good, it's kind of like, <clears throat> kind of like Gregorian chants and whatnot, intermixed in the whole movie, um, the movie itself, though, um, it's a really hard movie to understand, and it turns out it's not just me. There are a lot of people who don't understand this movie. Um, you know, I started watching it in the first, like, 20 minutes to an hour. I'm like, I get this movie. Like, what do these people don't understand? And then just, it goes off the, it doesn't go off the rails necessarily, but just the way the audio mix is, is intermingled and how characters interact and the conversations and the names, you kind of get lost in the names. There's so many of them. Um, but, you know, it is described as an experimental action film. Which I would say, yeah, there, there are a lot of scenes and like weird kind of dream sequences and and things that didn't make sense at first to me. I kind of had to go online and, and look up some answers or see what people thought. Um, 
but the Blu-ray is just beautiful. It's fully restored, 4K. I remember seeing a trailer on it a long time ago. I was really interested in seeing it. So I was really close to actually, <clears throat> really close to importing the Czechoslovakian Blu-ray because um, they had released one uh, that apparently was region free or whatnot. But then like a month later, like luck would have it, Criterion announces it. So I was super excited. Um, I know it's on YouTube, so if like you really are kind of iffy on it, or at least want to see a trailer of it, um, scroll through there, go on YouTube. Uh, you can just type Mark Marquette Leonard as a robot, I'm sure I think the full movie's on there somewhere. So, you know, check it out. I recommend it. If you're someone who likes Criterions and kind of knows what to expect when buying a Criterion, whether it be just a really good movie to something artsy and experimental. So, you know, buyer beware, but it is a really good movie. Um, other than that, um... You know, if you have any suggestions or comments, leave them below. Um, and like I said, I'm going to try and do a video of my collection. And then what I want to do afterwards is break it down into sections of imports, criterions, and anything else you guys want to see. If you guys, if I want to do, if you guys want me to do top 10 videos or something like that, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that stuff. I, I'm, again, I'm on a tear watching movies, so I might be posting videos a little bit more frequently right now. Because I just have, I've been going through every day, probably watching at least one to two movies. So, expect more videos. Uh, any questions or any comments, leave them below. You know the drill, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.